this video, we're going to look at check buttons for Tcanter. Hey guys, John Lolder here from Tcanter.com. And in the last video, we looked at radio buttons. In this video, we're going to look at check buttons. And check buttons are different than radio buttons in that you can select multiple check buttons if you want. With radio buttons, you can only pick one at a time from a list of items. Check buttons are a little bit more complicated than radio buttons, but not too bad at all. So before we get started, be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guidebook. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book. Enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. So let's learn about check buttons. Let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this intro to tkinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic kinter starter code. I'm calling it checkboxes.py. Just like with radio buttons from the last video, we need some sort of variable to keep track of which box has been checked or not. So in the last video, we used the string var. In this video, we're going to use the int var. And you'll see why in just a second. So uh, let's create some int vars. So I think I want three check boxes. So I'm going to call this var1. And this is going to be an int var. And notice the i and the v are both capitalized there. And like I said, I want three of these, so we'll just call this one var2 and var3. Now, uh, you might want to change these to something more descriptive. So our check boxes, we're going to stick with the pizza theme that we looked at in the last video with the radio buttons. We're going to have pizza toppings, so maybe I, I would call those toppings ones, topping two and topping three. Whatever, uh, just sort of name them whatever you want. So now let's create three check boxes. So I'm going to call the first one check one. And again, you can name them something better. And a checkbox in tkinter is actually called a check button. So it's not a box, it's a button, which is a little weird, right? A radio button. Radio button's not really a button either, but it's a check button. So, all right, we want to put it in root. We want the text to say, let's have our first one say pepperoni. And again, we need to set a variable. So we'll have var1 for that. And that needs to be a comma. There we go. Now, unlike radio buttons, we need an on value and an off value because at any given time, we could check or uncheck a box. Not so with radio buttons. You're selecting one and it automatically unchecks all the rest of them. But with check boxes, you can select multiple check boxes. So we need an on value and an off value. And so I'm going to give this an on value of one and an off value of zero. Now, we can do one and zero because we're using int bars. 1 and 0 are integers. Int is short for integer, integer variable. We could use a string var here. We could, you know, call this a string var. And in that case, we would need to use a string here. So I would maybe call this pepperoni for the on value and the off value. I don't know, maybe just nothing or something, right? But we're going to use integers because in this case, it's just kind of easier. And you'll see why in a minute. So, okay, we've got an on value. We've got an off value. And that's really it. I'm also going to give this a font just to make these a little bigger, just for fun. Uh, so let's go Helvetica, like size 18, something like that. So all right, I'll copy this guy. And now let's check one dot pack. And let's push this down the screen. So let's give it a pad Y of, and let's use a top wall. We want it down 40 and then 10 underneath. That looks good. Let's copy this and let's make two more. So I'm going to call this one check two, check two. And this one will be check three, check three. Oops, there we go. And let's have this one be cheese pizza. And we'll have this one be mushroom pizza. And this needs to be var two. And this needs to be var three. Now you'll notice I'm going to keep the on value and off values the same for all of these at one and zero, because you'll see why in a minute. So, okay, this creates our check boxes. And let's save this and run it just to make sure this is working okay. I'm in my C slash tkinter directory. Let's run python checkboxes.py. And when we get our checkboxes, they don't actually do anything. We can select any of them that we want. We can have multiple ones selected. Very cool. And that seems to work. Now, just like radio buttons, we can have a command fire whenever we click one of these things or not. So if you wanted to have a command when each one is selected, you would just give them a command of, and then let's say clicked. Right? Now we don't have this yet. But we're going to come up here and create it in just a second. So let's define clicked. And for now, we'll just pass. So anytime this is clicked both on or off, this function will get called and you could do anything you want. So let's come down here and let's create a label. And I'm just going to call this my underscore label. 
And it's going to be a label. We want to put it in a root. We want the text to say nothing at the beginning or uh, pick a topping. There we go. That'll work. Now let's give this a font of, uh, let's go Helvetica and size 18, make it a little bit bigger. And then let's my underscore label dot pack this guy. Give it a pad Y of 20, push down the screen a little bit. So now we can come up here and start to play around with this, uh, at least for this first checkbox. So let's run some logic. And you're going to have to run logic with checkboxes because you have to determine whether they're checked or unchecked, whether there's an on value or an off value. So let's say if var one dot get equals one. So if we click it, this on value gets assigned to our int var. If it's not clicked, then this zero gets assigned, right? So if it equals one, let's go my underscore label dot config and set the text equal to pepperoni. Else we just don't want to really do anything. So let's just pass for now. So let's save this and just see if that worked. So it says pick a topping. We click pepperoni. Uh oh, we get an error. What happened here? Ah, oh, var doy. That should be var one, of course. Uh, there we go. Var one. All right. Try it again. All right. So we click this. Boom. It says pepperoni. If we uncheck it, nothing happens because we didn't tell it to do anything, right? We could have, we could have, you know, gone like this and I don't know, maybe we'll just clear this. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. Pepperoni, we unclick it, it disappears. Pepperoni, un so, okay, that works, but we haven't done anything for the rest of these. And also, I really don't like this, right? I don't want it to be when you click the box, it runs the function because, you know, with forms, there's often lots of things in a form and a checkbox. So you're, you may still be filling out the other things in the form. You don't want to like submit the form or something when you click this checkbox. Uh, so let's take that off and let's do it the, the way you're more likely to do it by adding a button. So let's come down here and let's create a button. And I'm going to call this my underscore button. It's going to be a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say, I don't know, submit. And let's give this a command of, what do we call this function? Clicked. So there we go. And then let's my underscore button dot pack. Give this a pad Y of 20, push down the screen a little bit. So now if we run this thing, if we click this and then click the button, it says pepperoni. If we uncheck it and click the button, it says nothing. Now the rest of these things still don't work. So how do we get those things to work? Well, this is the bad news about checkboxes. We need to do this for all of the checkboxes, right? So let me just copy this, paste it in a couple more times. So let's say uh, check for pepperoni. And let's come down here and say check cheese. And then let's come down here and say check for, what do we call this one, mushroom? So here, this will be cheese, and this is var2. Um, var3 is mushroom. And instead of configuring out to the label, let's create a variable. And let's call this variable pepperoni. And we'll set this equal to pepperoni. Else, let's set that to nothing. All right, so we'll do the same thing here for cheese. We'll call this one cheese and we'll set that equal to cheese if they select it. Uh, otherwise, our cheese will equal nothing. And this is kind of silly, but these are check buttons. And finally, let's give this variable called mushroom and it will be mushroom. Otherwise, mushroom will be nothing, All right? So now let's run some more logic. So let's say nothing is checked, right? What do we want to happen? Well, if pepperoni or cheese or mushroom is selected, then let's go my underscore label dot config and let's set the text equal to you. Actually, let's make this into an F string. You selected. And then here we'll put our pepperoni output and our cheese output and our mushroom output. Else, if none of these have been selected, then let's my underscore label 
dot config and set the text equal to you didn't pick anything. Just a little silly logic to do something. And here we click pepperoni. It says you selected pepperoni. If we click pepperoni and cheese, it says you selected pepperoni cheese. Maybe we'll put an and sign or in there or something. Do all three. You selected pepperoni, cheese, and mushroom. Get rid of cheese, pepperoni, and mushroom. If we get rid of all of them, don't select any of them. Hey, you didn't pick anything. And there you go. So, like I said, a little bit more complicated than a radio button because we just have to account for all this stupid logic, right? And there's probably a more elegant way to do it than all of this, but I just wanted to be explicit in this video to show you exactly what's going on here and, uh, and see. Now, this is why we picked ones and zeros for our, our for our on and off value. You know, if each of these was a different word for a string var, we would have to say if, you know, var one equals, you know, pepperoni or whatever, right? But we used integers so we could just do a quick and easy one or a zero, if else, and uh, eh, that's all there is to it. So I hope you understand the functionality here of, you know, having this button called and then running a function. Once you run the function, you can do anything you want in here. We just did some silly, outputting some text onto the screen. But, you know, if they picked pepperoni, you could fire any other function you wanted just using this mechanism that we just went through. You know, just whatever you want to do. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Just, you know, kind of silly. That's a lot of code for <laughs> figuring out whether a checkbox was selected or not. But whatever, checkboxes are very useful. You'll use them for all sorts of things and they're pretty easy to use. And that's all there is to it. So that's the checkbox or check button widget. Very similar to the radio button widget in the next video, which should pop up up here in just a second. We'll look at the combo box, which is basically a drop down menu. Just another way to select items and it should be a lot of fun. So my name is John Elder from tkinter.com. I'll see you in the next video.